Fellow Americans, only one U.S. president was orphaned at 14, fought in about 100 duels, several wars personally, and survived an assassination attempt, along with establishing his own political party. Andrew Jackson was a brutal warrior, often short-tempered and cruel, and he was a shrewd politician whose influence still lingers. Today, I will provide you with a brief summary of the, United, of the seventh president of the United States. Many must know about the Democratic Party, especially considering this year is a election year and the current sitting president is a Democrat. But few of us know of its origins, its founder, or uh, his life. First, I'll go into his struggles of his early life before he got into the military. Then, I'll go into his track record with the Native Americans in his military career. And finally, I'll end with his notable deeds as president. Now, let's get into his early life. Uh, before he was even born, his father died, and then at age 14, he had already lost both of his brothers and his mother during the Revolutionary War to the British. In John McKinnon's 2009 book, American Lion, published by Random House, the first few chapters go into how he grew up poor and how he had to live with extended family. And after the war, the only way he was able to make ends meet was working as a saddler. Um, but uh, that is, uh, after this, it, it, it moves forward. Um, he moves westward to become a lawyer, and when he becomes a lawyer, this is where his terrible track record with the natives begins and shortly after his military career. Uh, his first job as a lawyer was processing claims made by settlers on the Native American lands, and then uh, after that, he used that money to buy his first plantation and his first black slaves. Not very great. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, shortly after that, the War of 1812 begins. He becomes a military leader and raises a militia force of over 2,000 men. He marches back eastward to fight against the British, but uh, uh, as laid out in Frank Ostley Jr.'s 1981 book, Struggle for the uh, Border Gulf Lands, his main goal actually becomes to destroy the Red Sticks, a rival faction of Native Americans that have aligned themselves with the British. After this, he starts the First Seminole War, which is another war predominantly against Native Americans, but also against the Spanish. In this war, he invades Spain, or he invades Florida, and the consequences, uh, the Spanish sell Florida to the United States. Uh, now let's get into uh, his uh, political career. After riding high on his uh, reputation as a war hero, uh, he uh, starts getting into politics, and one of the first things he does is establish the Democratic Party, which is formed out of a disagreement he has with the current party at the time, the Democratic Republicans. Then one of the other major things he does is start the Second Seminole War, which is again a war that was basically just fighting the Native Americans. Uh, and the end consequence was about 60,000 Native Americans placed west of the Mississippi and another 14,000 dead as a consequence of uh, the war and the Trail of Tears, the genocide that kind of formed out of the consequence of this. Um, and then he sold that land back to Americans that were living in the region. And this, along with a couple other policies like a particularly hefty tariff, uh, allowed him to become the first U.S. president to pay off the national debt. Uh, that tariff ended up causing him some headache, though, because he had it, it had caused South Carolina to credibly threaten to secede, which he was only able to avoid through some skillful political maneuvering. Now to wrap up and conclude, uh, now to wrap up and conclude, uh, as um, Andrew Jackson's life was hard even from the beginning. He lost his father before he was even born, and he lost basically all of his close family uh, before he was even 14, and he had to work labor until he was able to get a job as a lawyer where his terrible track record with the natives began, and then he goes into the military where that track record continues until he makes his way into the presidency where, again, he harps on Native Americans, but he's also able to prevent Cal South Carolina from seceding, establish the Democratic Party, and uh, pay off the national debt. I hope all of this crosses your mind as you guys make your way to the ballot box this November. Have a great day.